In addition to product types, which we have already seen, there are also some types in Haskell. We'll see why it's called a some type in a bit. Some types are sometimes alternatively referred to as a union type because of how they are similar to unions in set theory. Technically, Haskell has what is known as tagged union types. But as a beginner, the distinction between tagged and untagged unions is not too important, and so we will use the terms some type and union type interchangeably. We have already seen how we can use the bool type in Haskell. We can declare variables to have the type bool, and then we give our variables either an, a true or false value. You can't have a half true or half false value. Values can only ever be true or false. Let's see how the bool type is actually defined in Haskell. The bool type is defined like so. We've already seen similar type declarations for product types, but this one is slightly different, so let's describe it from scratch. The data keyword indicates that we are creating a type. Then comes the name of the type, which in this case is bool. Then comes an equal sign. After the equal sign comes two constructors separated by a pipe symbol in the middle. We read the pipe as or, so we read this as true or false. So the whole definition can be read as we are defining a data type called bool, which has the constructors true or false. Remember, the name of the type and all of the constructors should always begin with the capital letter. The key piece of syntax when defining some types is the pipe symbol, which is placed between each of the possible values, which we have seen means or. So true or false. Bool is an example of a sum type in Haskell because the number of possible values of the type is defined by the sum of the number of constructors. In this case, there are two constructors, true and false, so the sum of possible values is two. Bool is probably the simplest sum type that you can come across because there are only two possible values and the constructors themselves do not take any arguments. We'll see some more complicated sum types later. Here is a quick exercise for you. Pause for a few seconds and try to define your own type called month, which lists all of the months in the year, and then define some instances of the type. If you need to, check out the definition of bool, which we saw before, to refresh your memory on how to define a custom sum type. OK, let's see how we would do that. Here is the data type definition, and here are some instances of the type month, which we have defined. Let's focus on the data type definition. We are creating a custom type called month, which can take the values January, or February, or March, and so on. We add the deriving show clause to our type declaration so that when we try to view instances of the month type in GHCI, they will be displayed without running into any annoying errors. Now, when it comes to creating values of the type, we declare them to have the type month, and then we call the constructor we want. So for Jan, we are calling the January constructor, and for Feb, the February constructor, and so on. These constructors, in this case, do not take any arguments. And if we ask for the values in GHCI, since we added the deriving show clause to our type declaration, the values are shown just fine. The sum types we have seen so far, bool and month, have been very simple. Their constructors take no arguments, and so are known as nullary constructors. Some people refer to data types like these as enumeration types. This is because they simply enumerate over all possible values in a fixed set. So if we want to represent a month somehow, then creating an enumeration type like this makes absolute sense. It is a much superior way than using a type such as an int, whose possible values are much more than the fixed number of months in a year. This video is a clip from a longer video for beginners starting with Haskell. Check that out if you would like to see all of the content. Also check out the entire Introduction to Functional Programming with Haskell course on the LIGO Learn channel. See you next time.